okay, let's talk about factoring for a little bit more difficult case. What happens if A is not one? Remember, A is the leading coefficient. It's the coefficient of X squared. Um, you do not have to use this trick. You can do whatever you want. You can do trial and error, but I still use this sometimes because, you know, you get some of those problems where A and C have tons of different factors, and it's, I mean, it's kind of a nightmare to try and come up with what, um, what the two binomials would have to be. But again, we know that Factoring is really writing them out as a product, this quadratic out as a product of two binomials. So it might be pretty obvious, and say, oh, Miss Bermudez, this isn't that hard. 3x squared comes from 3x times x, because remember the first terms do multiply together to give you the x squared term. And then you might say, oh, well, I just need to find two numbers that multiply together to give me the negative 20, and that will be these two values multiply. Because remember the last multiply together give you the last constant. But what may not be so obvious is that, remember, it's the outside, so 3x times something plus x times something multiply together uh, or multiply each individually and then add together to give you that middle term. So it's this 3x or whatever um, now because the leading coefficient is not 1 that make it a little bit tricky to find out what these two values must be. And so we're going to play the x games, if that's what you want to play. You can still do trial and error. So um, let me show you how to set it up real quick. Remember the x means that's multiplied. So it comes on the right side is what you want to, the two terms, or the two um, terms together to multiply to be. And on this side is what they need to add to be. And individually on the top and the bottom will be the solutions. Okay, so if you have a leading coefficient, it's a little bit different um, what you want them to multiply together to be. And this is a, a trick that works uh, regardless of what method you're going to use. You want to first multiply A and C together. So multiply A and C, keeping the sign. And that's the value that I'm going to look for to see what they multiply together to be. But then I want them to add up to be, as usual, B, whether B is positive or negative. Okay? And so we're going to use that. Um, and so let me show you as an example here. Okay? So in this case, 3 times negative 20 gives me negative 60. But I want them to add up to be negative 11. Well, that's not so bad. We can determine that those two numbers should be negative 15 and positive 4. Okay? Um, but that doesn't work out because um, if we were to simply put uh, 3x minus 15 or 3x plus 4, if we did x minus 15, x plus 4, that obviously does not equal what we intended to do. And that is because we did use this trick where you did a times c. Okay, so instead of just using c, we multiply by a. So when you do this factor, when you use the x games or any other method, you have to divide, you have to go backwards, say we multiplied by a, so we have to do the opposite now to get our final value, and divide both of those factors by a now. Now, 4 thirds does not reduce. Reduce both of these before we plug them back in. Negative 15 divided by 3 does reduce, and it is indeed negative 5. Well, that seems silly. How could it be four-thirds? These are supposed to come out to be integers. Well, let me show you. And you know that one of them is supposed to have a 3x in it. Hmm. Well, let's just write this out. x minus 5, x plus four-thirds, just like we did before when we did the x games. And so what happens is if after you reduce them both, if you still have a fraction, that denominator in that fraction will become the coefficient of uh, the leading term for that binomial. And so that means I just bring that 3 out front, and our final answer would be x minus 5, 3x plus 4. And of course, I'm sorry if you can't see the yellow. Um, that's a bad choice. <laughs> and let's foil that out to check that. So the first would be 3x squared. Outside is uh, plus 4x. Excuse me. Inside's minus 15x, 
and lasts minus 20. So it indeed, indeed does work. It's 3x squared minus 11x minus 20. So just to review um, those steps, my one here in yellow is my final answer. Okay. Just to review those steps, what you do is multiply a times c. And that's what you want these terms to multiply together to be, but they want them to add together to be b, okay, which is that middle term. So you find your two values. That's what's here in red. Okay, but then don't forget we multiplied by the leading coefficient, which is something we don't normally do. Um, and so then we need to divide by that leading coefficient to make it work out. Reduce both of them and we substitute them back in when you have a denominator um, that is not one, you bring that forward as your coefficient. And it works out beautifully. Okay, I'm going to do one more example and we'll see how well you do. Okay. Um, Okay, sorry, I had to change the problem, make it a little bit tougher. Okay, so remember the first step um, to solving a binomial or to factoring out a trinomial like this, so that it's the product of two binomials. Remember, this is our end game right here. Is to factor out any common terms and to or any common factors, and to make sure that the leading coefficient is not negative. So in this case, they are all divisible by 2, and our leading coefficient is negative. So we're going to factor out a negative 2 here. It's going to leave us with 2x squared minus 11x plus 5. Okay. Now, at this point, the negative 2 is just going to be hanging out front here. So this will have a negative 2 out in front of your final answer. Um, do not forget that. In terms of what the quadratic does, this means it's going to grow twice as fast, but make the quadratic open down and has many other important implications as well. So don't just drop it. If we wanted this to be the problem, that would be the problem, but it came like that. Okay? All right. However, if we want to factor, this is what's going to produce our two binomials. So again, this right here is a times c. So 2 times 5 is 10. That's what you want it to multiply together to be, what you want it to add together to be negative 11. Well, this should be a pretty simple case, right? It just be negative 10 and negative 1. But that would be silly to rewrite it like that. Remember, we multiply by A, so we have to divide by A. So we're going to divide both of these by 2. Negative 1 half does not reduce, but negative 10 over 2 is negative 5, so we're going to write x minus 5, and then x minus 1 half. Remember where negative 2 just comes down, it's our coefficient, x minus 5 is reduced, and remember if you do have a denominator, you just bring it up as a coefficient of the rest of your binomial, and that should be your final factored form of this quadratic. Let's check that to make sure that that is accurate. Remember you want to FOIL first, let me write this in a different color. I'm going to FOIL first and then probably multiply by negative 2. So that should be first or 2x squared. Outsides are minus x. Insides minus 10x. And last plus 5. So we have negative 2 times 2x squared minus 11x plus 5. Distributing that 2 does indeed give us negative 4x squared plus 22x minus 10. Which just proves that this beautiful guy over here is indeed the true factored solution.